All right, just giving a little instructions here. So we've taken our masks off at our desks because everyone is sitting at their desk. Now, if I come up to your desk, if you could just put your, bring your mask and, and hold it over your face. Okay, so can we practice? I'm gonna walk up to your desk. I'm putting my mask on. You can hold it, just hold it up there like that. There we go. And if, I, if I've come to give you something, then you don't have to put it all the way on because I'm gonna be leaving in one moment. Or you can just go ahead and put it on. And you don't have to put yours on because I didn't come to your desk. So now I'm going to come to your desk. So you keep yours on up over your nose. I'm going to come over here. Oh, good practice. And you're holding on. Oh, good. Hello. Good. Good. Coming to check for your work. Nice. I see. Auntie Jackie has left some leaves and things on your, on your desk. Thank you. All right. Now I'm away again. And you can take your mask off again. <laughs> what a silly game this is, I must say. All right. I see everyone sitting in the middle of their desk. That's fine. Now, the only thing that won't work is if, you, if you're sitting on this edge and you're sitting on that edge and you're too close. So if you sit in the middle of your desk, I think we're good. All right. <laughs> all right. Now, this is acting like it's having trouble. So let's just, all right. It seems like it's OK. All right. So the way we usually start the day is I call attendance, right? I call, usually I just say, good morning, first grade, are you here? And everyone says, we're here. But now that I have you in the room, I can call you each by name. So when I say good morning um, to you, like this, I'll demonstrate with Uncle Steve. Good morning, Uncle Steve, are you here? Yes, Mr. Coulter, I am here. Very nice, that you stand up and just respond to me. Thank you very much. Good morning, Koto. Are you here? Yes, Mr. Koto. I am here. Thank you. And you can stay standing up, actually, for now, because we'll st all stay standing up till the end. Good morning, Suheri. Are you here? Yes, Mr. Koto. I am here. Good morning, Stone. You can sing on this pitch. Good morning, Stone. Are you here? Yes, you can put your mask, keep your mask back on, especially while we're singing. I am, say, I am here. Thank you. You can stay standing up. Yeah. The rest of you I haven't called yet, so if I called your name already, you're standing up. If I haven't called you, you can sit down. Good morning, Arrow. Are you here? Good. Good morning, Nevea. Are you here? Good morning, Kyler. Are you here? Good morning, first grade. Are you here? Yes, Mr. Coulter, we are here. And stay standing up for the morning verse. Ready? The sun with loving light makes bright for me each day. The heart with sacred power gives strength unto my limbs. In sunlight shining clear, I am reverent. The strength of humankind has so graciously been planted in my soul that I, with all my might, may love to work and learn. Toward us comes light and strength. From us rise love and thanks. Excellent. Now we'll stay standing up for a song. And today we're going to sing the old lady. There was an old lady who swallowed a fly. Actually, let's sit down. I don't know why she swallowed a fly. I guess she'll die. There was an old lady who swallowed a bird. How absurd to swallow a bird. She swallowed the bird to catch this. She swallowed the bird to catch the spider that wriggled and jiggled and wiggled inside her. Masks on for singing, though. She swallowed the spider to catch the fly. I don't know why she swallowed the fly. I guess she'll die. There was an old lady who swallowed a cat. Imagine that. She swallowed a cat. She swallowed the cat to catch the spider that wiggled and jiggled and wriggled inside her. She swallowed the spider to catch the fly. I don't know why she swallowed the fly. 
I guess she'll die. There was an old lady who swallowed a dog. What a hog to swallow a dog. She swallowed the dog to catch the cat. She swallowed the cat to catch the bird. She swallowed the bird to catch the spider that wiggled and jiggled and wriggled inside her. She swallowed the spider to catch the fly. I don't know why she swallowed the fly. I guess she'll die. Thank you for singing along with me. There was an old lady who swallowed a cow. Did we do cow yet? I don't know how she swallowed a cow. She swallowed the cow to catch the dog. She swallowed the dog to catch the cat. She swallowed the cat to catch the bird. She swallowed the bird to catch the spider that wiggled and jiggled and wriggled inside her. She swallowed the spider to catch the fly. I don't know why she swallowed the fly. I guess she'll die. Last verse. There was an old lady who swallowed a horse. She's dead, of course. That's the end of that song. <laughs> All right. Now, I think we can take our masks off, hopefully. And because we're, now we're talking instead of singing. And I have a little poem for you that I have. Uh, that I have. And it goes like this. The, it's about fairies. The fairies have never a penny to spend. Your turn. The fairies have never a penny to spend. Good. They haven't a thing to put by. They haven't a thing to put by. But theirs is the dower of bird and flower. But theirs is the dower of bird and flower. And theirs is the earth and the sky. And theirs is the earth and the sky. Good, that's enough for this day. And Auntie Jackie has arrived, so we will put our masks on because she'll be walking right past you. Auntie Jackie, are you ready? Or maybe she's not quite ready, in which case I will be the day of the date. Anyone know what day today is? What day is today? Do you know what day it is? Today is the day after Wednesday, which means it's any Thursday. Let me, let me answer that in a minute, okay? Or Uncle Steve can answer it for you. Today is Thursday. What's the month? The month is no November. November. Yesterday was the 11th. So today, raise your hand if you know what today is. Today is the 12th. Two thousand twenty. So I will say the whole thing, and then you can say the whole thing. There was an old lady who swallowed a fly. Okay, here we go. Today is. I'm gonna say. I'll say the day and the date, and then you can say it after me. Today is Thursday, November twelfth, two thousand twenty. Ready? Today is Thursday, November 12, 2020. I'm, sorry, I'm giggling now all of a sudden. All right, so I think I can take this back. Is, is Jackie not outside the door? She's right out there. Okay, Jackie's here. <laughs> Welcome, Auntie Jackie. Good morning, first graders. Good morning. Oh, oh. Let me grab a couple of crayons while I'm at it. It's so enjoyable to have students and Mr. Coulter and Uncle Steve here. Good morning. Um, are you able to hear me through my mask? Is it clear enough? I think you can take it off and speak. It's okay. I think we just keep it on during transition. So while you're coming in, 
or they are moving around, or when you go to their desk, then we, we all, all put our desk maps on. So, I'm, I'm waiting at the door, I'm Auntie Jackie, I'm doing the garden lesson, and then I hear flower, and bird, and fly, and spider, and I think, you guys are already doing gardening when you sing about these things and you talk about these things. I wanted to share with you this flower as a gift my friend gave me, Auntie uh, Laura, in the first in the um, kindergarten. She said, I was rushing out of my house today and I was ready to leave and I saw this flower. I said, uh uh, uh I gotta stop and pick this one for Auntie Jackie. This flower is a hibiscus, but it's very busy inside. It has many more flower petals than a regular hibiscus. Somebody must have taken great care to, to make this flower grow well. Because this flower has extra ruffles, they call it a double bloom or a triple bloom, meaning two or three inside. And somebody found a flower doing this and they took very good care of this plant and cut, cut some branches and made more babies because this is not a regular occurrence. When you guys are out and about, look, look as much as you can because you're going to find things, things that are not regular and they may inspire you, they may make you happy, and may, may look at that flower and say, hey flower, so nice to meet you, because I'm not so regular myself either. I'm not regular. And guess what? I don't think anybody's regular, believe it or not. Nobody's too regular. So today, I'm going to just bring in one more insect image. <laughs> We saw my ants, we saw the ant story. I told you I would get you a pincher bug drawing. And Auntie Cheyenne did this one last year. It's a very nice drawing. She has small segments showing, lines. She's got the legs and the head and the eyes. Sometimes the pincher bugs run away and you can't even finish drawing them, right? So I think if you do draw your insects, you can say, they have eyes, I have eyes. I remember that they have eyes, and then they run away, right? Or you say, oh, they have legs, I have legs, and you remember they have legs. They got that funny thing on the bottom of their tail. That's the pincher. So if you don't remember everything, you could start it, and then when you see them again, you could go back to your drawing. These pincher bugs are eating all kinds of dead leaves, yeah? I've said that they're the ones that eat the dead stuff. Today, I brought in some leaves that are all kinds of leaves. So I'm encouraging you guys, look at the leaves that you have on your desk if you're inside our classroom now. Go ahead and feel them and touch them. And you probably remember me doing this. <laughs> Rub each leaf to break the oils inside and smell if you like that smell. Oh, I used to think I like that smell. That one's strong today. Some of the leaves have no discernible smell and some of the leaves have different shapes. So all first graders, all of you, inside the classroom, at home in your classroom, sitting on your bed at the kitchen table. If you're at home right now, I'm going to invite you to step outside and get some leaves outside the door. Maybe it's a house plant. So when you get your leaves on the screen and here, or the YouTube, and here in our classroom, we're gonna look at these leaves. So all first graders, I invite you to go ahead and touch the leaves, smell these leaves, feel the leaves. Because what we're going to do with me right now is we're gonna do a rubbing of the leaf with our crayons and you're gonna end up having a very beautiful image to take home. You can even put some eyes on it if you like to impersonate leaves. I notice that it's very hard to smell a leaf when you have your mask on and you guys are trying so hard. Good job, I didn't even think about that. Have you got one of these leaves that you're thinking is your favorite? What is the one that you like the most? We're gonna pick the first one. Take a leaf that you like. You don't have to copy me. I like the one with all the edges. This one's a tricky one. Okay. This is the tricky one. I'm gonna save that for later. I think I'm gonna take the simple leaf. I'm gonna feel it and get to know it. If I look on the back, it has many lines. Let's go ahead, if you're back to your um, desk or your bed or your kitchen table at home, great, go get a piece of paper, have a piece of paper nearby. Now, if this is all feeling like too many things, just watch, you could do it there. Does everybody have a crayon you could get out? 
Get out one of your crayons. Yeah. yeah. Any color that you like. I'm going to start with the light color. And I'm going to take the piece of paper. There's one underneath and one on top, right? Put the leaf in the middle as though it were a sandwich. Okay. Put that leaf right in the middle as it were a burrito or a musabi. It's the rice and the musabi right in the middle. I'll be right there. Friend, I'm going to come around and help you out. So you put it on the paper. Very nice. You put the other paper right on top. If you're ready, you look ready, then you're going to rub it with your hands. You're going to smush it into place. Get your papers. Uncle Steve will come. Smush it into place. Now I can't really see it. You can feel it, right? Getting it ready, rubbing it down. Because sometimes leaves are curly or they have a, a lot of um, structure and you have to press them to the page. Put it in your sandwich. Yeah, you have one? Yeah, put it in between the two pages like mine. Slide it a little closer to you so you can work with it. You are, everyone looks ready. And then you're gonna take your crayon. You're gonna take, probably like, do you guys know this as the mama bear side? No. Do you see this block? It has a very large side and then a little tiny side. Take the side that is hmm, the medium side because you wanna be able to pinch those flat sides. See, it's, you could, you, now that you have a good grip, you're gonna slide your crayon across your page. You have to hold onto the paper with your hand, are you noticing that? And you're gonna, it's hard to see the yellow, yeah? Can you see, Aunt Jackie, it's hard to see the yellow. So I'm gonna take a darker color so you can see how it's coming out. I think you might have done this sometime in, in garden class. I'm going to show the screen here. I can now see what was underneath. I have rubbed my crayon on this. We call this a leaf rubbing. I have rubbed my crayon. I kind of like the two colors. Yes, you got it. Yes, there's different styles I see. You do have it. Keep going. Now, Tyler, you are using a crayon with a pointed end and you're not really able to see what I could see. So if you could get a fat one and rub it on the side. If you don't have, if you, oh, thank you, it fell right out. Now, some of you may have picked the crayon with the point, and if that's all you have, I'll, t I'll teach you a trick. But my directions for you is to take the crayon that's the square crayon, okay? Let's just leave it at that. Later on, I'll teach you the one with the point. But today's directions is used to these rectangular, blocky crayons. I don't know the term that Mr. Coulter uses with you, so I'll just use that today. It's like a block, right? Let's see what you got. It's coming out, yes! Can you see all the different lines in our leaves? Uh-huh. Now you may add another color. You may do another leaf. Okay, do you want to know the name of your leaf? I don't know the names of all the leaves I've picked, but the one that I just did is a mango leaf, a young mango leaf. You have done, do you know the name of that one? Can you give, it, give a descriptive word? What does it look like to you? It looks like a leaf. Does it look like a car? No, it doesn't. What does this leaf look like to you? A Some, heart? It looks like a heart. Yes, it does to me too. Some people say it may look like um, the bottom of a, a pig's foot, right? So that's the next leaf. I, I see that Tyler did that. That's the next leaf you could do. You could do all kinds of leaves. You could do them all on the same page. And you can also take another page. You can add color. Another color. This is an activity all the kids in the school love to do. Even the fifth and sixth graders, they love it. And sometimes they forget to do it for years, and then we do it again, and they say, oh, I love this. This is called a leaf rubbing, and it's a way for us to know the leaf. Is anyone? 
anyone have any questions? Yes, Tyler. What did you say? You can use the paper that's underneath. You can turn the sandwich, yeah, the colored one down. Yep, and now you have another sandwich. Yes. And I, rem I see how Suhaiti, she remembers to rub it first because the leaves have structure and they push the paper off. Please don't collect your crayon. Thank you. Please don't collect the crayon. Again, you can rub it against the page like that. This is a leaf rubbing. I invite you guys to do it. You can do it all the time, right? The leaf should probably be dry. If it's a rainy day, you could dry it off. You could do this when you're bored. You could do this when you're happy. You can make a birthday card with this. Mm -hmm. You could put your name on it, or you could make a birthday card for someone in your family by folding it, maybe, to make it a card. Oh, you did it. <coughs> yes, thank you for raising your hand. Okay, you know where to go. Thank you for telling me. <coughs> Anybody want to share anything about this? What did you um, notice? What are you wondering about? Yeah? <coughs> Pardon me, I'm, I'm a little tickled. <coughs> I'm gonna say that's that. We can come back to leaf rubbings another time when we have garden class. We usually make a leaf rubbing on a small piece of paper and you make a name tag for me. So we could do that again. Thank you very much. You now are getting friendly with your leaves. You can smell them and rub them and touch them and think of words. <clears throat> Thank you very much, you guys. We'll see you another time. You can take these home. Later? You can take them home later. Thank you very much, Andy Jackie. Thank you. All right. I think this Yeah. All right. Um, now I'm going to bring this over here and finish talking about what day it is and things like that. So did you, first graders, did you see how we have one cookie here? And do you see how we have a, one bear eating one cookie? The bear says chomp, and he eats the whole cookie. And then we have, what? Can I take my mask off? Yes, you may take your mask off. Thank you for asking. Can I take my mask off? Yeah, you can, because no one is walking around. If someone comes near you, then they would pause and tell you to, yeah. Okay, so we had one bear eating one cookie, and then we had a cookie broken in half, and two dogs eating it. And on your desk, you may see a piece of paper and some scissors. And I would like you to do what I did, which is to cut out those two circles. You see the scissors and the... Yeah, there you go. Just do your best. Don't worry if it's not perfect, but do your best. Yeah, just cut, start cutting like that. Your scissors are upside down, though. Pick them, pick them. The, And then we had another cookie, like this, broken into four parts. And then we had four little mice eating them. In this case, we have two dogs eating each half of a cookie. And in this case, we had four little mice eating four pieces of cookie. And today we have, and then we switch to sandwiches. We had one whole sandwich, and we had one bear eating chomp one whole sandwich all by himself. And then, we had a sandwich cut in half, and we had each dog eating half a sandwich. <clears throat> I wonder what tomorrow, I wonder what yesterday was. This it was a day off from school. 
Nevea, will you come? Will you bring your? You're wearing your mask already. Will you come up to the to the front of the classroom and turn over that 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 uh, card right there and see what's on it? But let me ask you a question first. So we had we had one bear and one cookie. Half a cookie, a cookie cut in two parts and two dogs. And then we had a cookie cut in four parts, fourths, and then we had four mice. And then we switched back to a whole thing, just like in the beginning we had a whole thing. We have a whole sandwich this time. And then we had one bear again. And then we had a sandwich cut into two parts, or halves. And then we had two dogs. I wonder, what do you think was going to be in there? What do you think? You want to guess before you look at it? <clears throat> whole cookie, bear. Half cookie, two dogs. Now we have one sandwich, and we have half a sandwich. <clears throat> I did four pieces. Maybe four pieces. That was a good guess. I think you might be right. She's right. She's right. So we have a sandwich. Everyone see that? We have a sandwich cut in four pieces. Sandwich cut in four pieces. What do you think the next one will be? So Haiti, will you come up and turn over the, the next card? I wonder what's going to be here. Before you turn it over, let's make a guess. So here we had one bear and one cookie. Here we had cut in half and two dogs. And then we had cut in four pieces and four mice. Mice, I think. And then we had one sandwich and one bear. And we had a sandwich cut in half and two dogs. Now we have a sandwich cut in four pieces, fourths. What do you think will be here? You don't know? Anybody else want to guess? What do you think, Stone? Four mice. Four mice. Let's see if he's right. Four mice, sure enough. Nibble, 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 nibble. Four mice nibbling away. You can put it right back in there. On our sandwich. I can make a story up and just say, I had a sandwich, I cut it into four pieces, and each little mouse got to eat one piece. Okay. So if you had a cookie, if you had a cookie, how could you make it how could you cut it evenly and perfectly in half? How could you do that? <clears throat> you could cut it with scissors since it's paper. If it was a cookie, you'd probably use a knife, wouldn't you? <clears throat> what? Fold it in half. Did anyone else thinking of that? Let's try. Take your, take your thing and see. Let me show you how I would not do it. I would not fold it only that far because that would not be in half. Then one dog, isn't it a dog? One dog would get a big half and the other one would get a small, a small part and it wouldn't really be halves. So how can you fold it so that it goes right in half? I see this. Yes, I see that. I see that. And then when you unfold it, you can see a line. And why don't you go ahead and draw a line along your, along your fold. And what is your question? Um, it looks like a butterfly. It does look like a butterfly. It does look like a butterfly. I'm going to pretend it's a cookie, though, right now. So did you take and draw a line along this fold? With your crayon, draw a line like that. Draw a line. Look up, can you hold yours up so others can see? You can hold it up, show your classmates how you drew that line. In the halfway. This one? Not that one, no, the other one. We have it, we're, not, we're gonna do something different with this one. And then what I want you to do. <clears throat> I want you to take your crayon and I want you to write on it. I think I'll just make a big one over here. It's time for Vito Los Huecos to go away. Uh, 
I will show you. I know that you are ready to do the next step. Here is my round circle. Hey, that was a pretty good freehand circle. Um, and I'm going to, and then I have, a, I have a line down the middle of it like that on my fold. And then I want you to take your crayon and you want to write a one right there and a line under it and a two like that. And that means half. That's a number way of writing the word half, which I can also write like this, H-A, it sounds like it's just H-A-F, H-A-F, but there's actually a silent L in the middle of it. I'm going to use a different color for the silent L, a little bit different color. So what I want you to do is make a one and a line and a two. And then I want you on the same thing on the other side. A one and a line and a two. Like that. A one and a line and a two. Why? Why would I write one and two? You don't know how to make a two. You don't know how to make a two? Can you copy up here this one? Whoops. Why would I put a one on the top and a two underneath, I wonder? Anyone have an idea? It makes three. It would make three if you added them together. That's right. Nevea has another idea? It makes four. It does make four if you, if you add up the bottom two numbers. But I put a one on the top and a two on the bottom because I broke this cookie into two parts. And that's what the bottom number means. Great. Now I want you to go ahead and cut it down the cut it down that line. <clears throat> now I want you to take your scissors and just cut it down the line like that. There we go. Snip. Cut it in half. Just like that. Okay? And then we will take the other one and we will do the same thing, only we'll add one more step. So we take our other one and fold it in half. And Draw a line, fold in half, yeah. And draw the line down the middle, just the same as before. But this time, now I want to see if you can make it look like this one. How will we make it look like this one? Fold it in half again, that is one way we can do that. So this one, just draw your line yet? Oh, you do like Yes, that's right. You have it. You have it. I think that's even a, a I was thinking I was going to fold it, just I was going to leave it uh, open and fold it. But I think Koto had, I mean, um, Suhaili had a great idea, which is you leave it folded like that. And then you fold it again, like this. One second, Steve. Uncle Steve will be out in a moment. Then I fold it again so that it looks like one fourth piece of pizza. Can you put your mask on because I'm coming over to you? Or you can just see from here. And then I'll fold You have this. Or a piece of watermelon. That's right. There, Tyler, can you see? Where are you going? No, not now. Okay, now fold that, fold it again. Okay. We have it like this. That's right. Fold it again. Now draw the other line that goes on it. Now draw the other line that goes on it. So that now yours looks like this. Like a, like a round window with four framing mullions in between. 
15. So good. Yeah. And now you can cut that into four pieces, into fourths. I'm going to cut it first one way. And then I'm going to follow my line and cut it the other way. I'm going to follow my line and cut it the other way. First one way and then the other way. And that's all we really need to do. But if you are waiting for your friends to finish on each one of these little ones, you can make a line, a one, and a line, and a four underneath it because you cut it in four parts. And this is one of the parts. This is one of the parts, but you cut it in four parts, so that's why the four is on the bottom. Great. Now, it is already getting so late and we did not do all the things that I was thinking we would do. So here's what I want to do next. We are going to make a drawing. But first, I want to show you. We've been talking a lot. Well, first we better, oh my goodness. I guess first I'll go ahead and do this. I will go ahead and um, remind us that these two letters together does anyone know what sound they make? Well, what sound does this make when you say it by itself? H, H is <sighs> right. And what about this one? What what? That's a T, and it says T. -t, -t. That's right. And when I put these two letters together, they make a new sound. Does anyone know what it is? What happens when I put these two letters together? What sound do they make? They don't make they make a new sound, it's called, it's called like this. Bite your tongue, like this, and say. That's right. Those two letters together make is a tickly, a tickly tongue sound. It tickles my tongue when I do that. Can anyone think, oh, but you can also hum while you make it. You don't have to whisper. Like I could whisper it and say, but I can also hum it and say, mm, good. Can anyone think of a word with, with that sound in it? Mm, mm. It sounds like zzz. It sounds really similar to the zzz sound, but it's mm, zzz, mm. How about the? The. The. the story, the class, the school. The is spelled T-H-E, the. What about I, the? What happens if I put a S at the end? What word is that? I, Go like this. 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 And. Ah. What letter would I put to make an ah sound? Ah. What letter would I use? Ah. To make an ass. Huh? Like apple, A for apple, good. This and that. What if I put a T at the end? That too. That. And we go like this. At. That. That. This and that. All right, we will talk a lot more about this TH sound but right now. I'm discovering that it's more difficult to teach to this computer and to children at the same time than I thought it would be. Because sometimes I'm doing things and I'm not even on the camera anymore. So I have to work on that, work on that puzzle. 
All right, now please take out your main lesson book. Open up to the very next blank page. Put all your other things to the side for a moment, except for your crayons, which you will need your crayons. Did anybody remember the story of the little guy who was only this big? Did anyone see that lesson yesterday or the day before? There was a little guy who was born only as big, it was a baby, and he was only as big as your thumb. And he never got any bigger, although he did grow up, and he was no longer a baby. He was a teenager, and he was still just as big, only as big as my thumb. And he had many adventures. And if you want to hear the whole story, you have to watch yesterday's lesson. Or the day before lesson. You guys maybe didn't do that. Okay. So I will talk about the story while I do the drawing and while I teach you how to do the drawing. So you are going to need your yellow stick and your yellow block to start with. A yellow, that's a yellow, yeah. Get your yellow block. Your yellow block crayon. <clears throat> and with your yellow block crayon, I'm going to draw this. A hand with a small little palm thumb <clears throat> standing right in the palm of the hand. And I will show you how to draw that. So when you look at your page, the hand is going to be in this bottom part. I'm going to draw a really big hand like this. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a curved line like that. So go ahead and do that block crayon. Not stick crayon, block crayon. I don't have it. You don't? Okay, let's get you one. Are we not having yellow? Uh, several students who don't have yellow. Come on. Who don't have yellow sticks. The yellow block is more important right now, so. We can probably even do without the yellow stick. I just stole this one. If they don't have yellow, they do have the, the, the light orange. Okay. So with your yellow block crayon, make a curved line like that. That's going to be the thumb. See how my thumb is curved? When I hold my thumb like that, it kind of curves back a little bit. And then it curves the other way. And then the rest of the hand is over here. Finger, 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 finger. With the block crayon. With the block crayon, yeah. I mean, you can switch between block and stick if you want, but I think you may as well just use and then join that together. And fill it in with your yellow block crayon. And then my thumb looks a little too much like a stick, so I'm gonna curve this up here like that. And my thumb looks a little too long now, so I'll have to make my fingers longer. And make the whole thing fatter now. I can see it needs to, the whole thing needs to be a little fatter. And that's good enough. Wait, you don't have a paint, you don't have a page to do this on. That's a, that's not a blank page, is it? That looks like a kind of stuff on it all over. Let's see. Is this the thumb and those are the fingers? Mm -hmm. Let's make it let's make it again a new page, a fresh page. Right. 
Very good. Okay. So I'm going to do this one more time because I see that some people are having a hard time seeing that shape. So I'm going to take a different color, a similar color, and I'm going to keep doing it one more time. So the first thing I did was this part. So the very first thing, this is my page. This whole thing is my page right here. This whole thing is my page. And I'm going to take a, a big part of the bottom of the page and do this for the, for the thumb. And then I'm going to go way out here and draw fingers. Finger, 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 like that. And then I'm going to join them together and put a wrist down at the bottom. And make, make my thumb fatter. my middle finger longer. You can see if I hold my finger like my hand like this, I can see this one's a little shorter, longer, shorter, and shortest. So I'm gonna, this one's now I'm gonna draw a little tom thumb on top. So I'm gonna take my gold or you could take your orange and I'm going to make a head up here. And I'm going to make two triangles. I'm going to make a triangle like that. I'm going to make a triangle like that. I made a triangle on the top and a triangle on the bottom. And I'm making arms going out the sides and join his neck to his body. And now I have to bring his feet all the way down to the hand. And then I can fill him in a little bit. Are you following along? Are you doing it the same as me? You're doing, you should be doing the same exact thing I'm doing, as best you can. Just trying to do the same thing. Let's like this. on him, whatever color you want. I used red for my hat in my drawing. Yes. Make a little triangle hat on his head. Put a little feather in it. Put some hands on him, finger, thumb and fingers. Thumb goes up and fingers go out. Make him a little stronger looking. He looks a little bit too much like a stick so far. And his arms are a little too short. And then you can put some, then you can put some clothes on him. You can put a little suit on him. Put a purple, I put a purple shirt. It's all the way down to there.
And if you put your mask on, then Uncle Steve and I can come over and help you a little closer. We can talk with and give you some more help if you can put a mask on. Great. Okay, so Tom Thumb. I think you just have to watch yesterday's lesson. I don't think I'm going to tell the whole story over again. And we are just about out of time. So you can keep working on that drawing while I turn this off. And I'll see those of you out in TV land tomorrow. I'll try to refine the system a little bit so that the lesson in person and the lesson on the computer are a little more, both seem a little, looking a little